Welcome to your Air Signs Elemental Yoga class. If you've been loving this free series, check out my Embodied Astrology Zodiac Yoga series. These are 12 25 minute classes plus bonus talks and meditations on each of the 12 zodiac signs. Go to moongirlastrology.com and sign up to dive deeper into this somatic synchronization with the stars. We're going to begin your air signs elemental yoga practice, just moving, flapping our arms here, getting the shoulders warmed up. So bringing the hands out, the palms facing down to begin. And we're just simply going to start rotating the shoulders while we ground in and stabilize. So combating or rather balancing out that airy energy by sitting down on the earth, getting super grounded and just opening the shoulders. We're gonna fly here, strengthening our wings, moving in one direction and then switching directions here, creating mobility in the shoulders. Breathing deeply here, long deep breaths. Maybe bringing in your ujjayi breath. Then we're gonna flex the palms and point press them like we're pressing two walls away. We're gonna continue circling here just for a few deep breaths. And reversing. Gorgeous. And then we're actually just going to curl the bicep, rotating at the elbows and kind of swaying side to side here following my lead and bringing the hands to the earth, just opening up through the right side body, looking up, breathing deeply, opening through the side waist, creating space between the intercostal muscles. Beautiful, bringing the hand down, coming through center, and then inhaling to the second side. And coming back to center, we're going to practice a little mental exercise to get started. The air signs rule over the mind, the intellect. It's their cer- air signs are cerebral, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, or wherever those signs fall in your birth chart, you have them somewhere for sure. And of course, we all need our intellect. So we're going to play a little mind game that's also kind of a wrist exercise. So we're going to hunt the bunny. <laughs> with the gun. So see if you can hunt the bunny with the gun. There's always a bunny and there's always a gun and I'm switching hands, alternating between the bunny and the gun. And this is just a mind exercise, getting your left and right brain popping off, seeing if you have this uh, coordination happening. There's always a bunny and there's always a gun. (laughs) Smile if you are having fun with this or if you're not. Excellent, keep going. Couple more, fantastic. Then we're just gonna do some shaking out of the wrists and even flexing the palms up to the ceiling, dropping the shoulders down and breathing here. Couple breaths, shoulders melt down with the palms reach up towards the sky and then releasing, exhaling down and meet me standing on your mat. Come to the top of your mat and bring your feet hips width apart, inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. Feeling the air on the nose as you inhale the sensation of the breath filling your belly like a balloon and exhaling, compressing the belly, expelling the breath. We actually convert the prana in the air into prana through our ujjayi breath, believe it or not. So experiment with me for a moment. Just breathe normally and with your clean hands, feel the quality of the breath in and out your nose, and then bring in your ujjayi breath, that victorious breath, by gently constricting the back of the throat while letting the low belly be the engine of the breath, filling the lungs, inhaling ujjayi breath, 
and bringing the hand to the nose to feel if you can notice the difference in the quality of the breath. A little experiment to get our intellectual air sign energy going. We're going to do one more mental coordination exercise for you air signs. And we're just going to move the right arm up and down. And then we're going to bring in the left arm. But while the left arm, right arm stays pulsing up and down, the left arm is going to come out to the side. So keep the right arm pulsing up and down and the left arm makes three stops rather than the right arm making only two. And see if you can keep it going, practicing this coordination. It's hard when you're talking. <laughs> the trick is to get the right arm pumping off and then to practice the left arm, the more complex arrangement. Fantastic. And let's try it on the other side. Get your left arm up, going up and down. This is the rhythm, this is the equation for the left arm. And then the right arm is going to make a little detour, jetting out to the side. Mental coordination, mind exercise. Fantastic. Give it a shot. Just laugh at yourself. Maybe you want to practice this later. If it was tricky for you, get the brain on board. Awesome. <laughs> Release that. Fantastic. And we're just going to root down through all four corners of the feet as we practice our ujjayi breath. Feeling the feet anchoring down into the earth and with this rootedness we're just going to shake. So shaking is actually a real practice in Bali anyways. <laughs> and I highly recommend shaking. It really helps the vasha, the connective tissue, get out of any habitual stuck patterns, and great for the lymphatic system, great for your nervous system. Just shaking, shaking one leg, shaking the other leg. Maybe now you wanna unground yourself and just jump up and down, jumping for sure, rebounding. Great for the lymphatic system. If you have a little trampoline in your house, that would be awesome. And just coming back, collecting and gathering all of that airy energy, that erratic, almost destabilizing energy, that versatile, curious energy. And we're going to draw it back into the center with our breath. Ujjayi breath. Noticing the quality of the breath. And treating our practice today like an experiment. Getting into that Aquarian mad scientist vibe. Sign of Aquarius being the sign that rules over technology, the third air sign in the zodiac. And we're just going to move through a fast <laughs> variation of our vinyasa flow. So we've been working pretty traditionally with our sun salutations and we're going to switch it up to indulge the Gemini energy. So rooting down as you lift the arms up, open the heart, exhaling, bowing towards the earth. Gently lift and lengthen, just quickly moving here through our vinyasa flow. And exhaling towards the earth, opening the heart and rolling back for five breaths to our downward facing dog. Stretching out the hamstrings for a moment here, probably walking out your dog. Air signs are the air, you can think of the quality of air, it's moving all the time. It's a light, agile, ephemeral, has a light, agile, ephemeral quality. Breathing in and breathing out. Beautiful. Lifting the right leg and bringing it through, rising up into our crescent lunge. Breathing here, opening the heart. The air element corresponds with the heart chakra, anahata chakra. Anahata means unstruck sound. Apparently. <laughs> and then lifting up, launching off, flying through the air. Gorgeous. And then just stepping back into our crescent lunge, 
opening up to warrior two. We're gonna reverse our warrior and we're gonna keep moving, windmilling the arms and twisting, bringing the left armpit to the left knee. The hands are an anjali at the heart center or maybe you wanna open up the arms, flying the arms, twisting here. And then we're gonna pivot on the demi point of the back foot, leaving the right knee over the right ankle and reversing your warrior. Let's try that one more time. Flowing through warrior two, I'm pivoting. And then after I'm over here, lifting on the demi point and coming into a twist on the right side. Breathing here and opening, reversing your warrior. And let's just straighten through the right leg Excellent. Reverse Trikonasana. Bringing in our Ujjayi breath. Beautiful. And then let's come into our full triangle here. For a few breaths. Beautiful. And then just cartwheeling the arms towards the air. Stay lifted in your lunge, pressing the left hand down, reaching the right hand up. A big wingspan here between the arms, detoxifying through a twist and bringing the hands down, stepping back into our plank posture. and coming to through and coming all the way to the earth for some heart opening shalabhasana bringing the hands back fingers pointing towards the toes and we're going to lift up through the heart through the shoulders pressing the pubic bone down into the earth perhaps that means tucking your tailbone it's keeping the legs active and caffeinated stimulated like an air sign loves and lifting up Lying here in your shalabhasana, opening the heart and releasing. And we're going to practice shalabhasana one more time, focusing on the heart center, anahata chakra, our antenna or our energy center that connects us to the universal quality of unconditional loving kindness and compassion. And lifting up, lift, opening the heart, rolling the shoulders back. The neck is long, looking forward. Legs are active, reaching back. And releasing towards the floor, pressing up through a plank and back to our downward facing dog. We're gonna come into our second side, lifting the left leg, stepping through and rising up into our high crescent lunge. Breathing deeply here. And we're just gonna fly into warrior three. Perhaps bringing the hands in front of you for an extra challenge, Superman. Internally rotating the right leg, lifting the heart and then stepping back, coming into a warrior two. Let's reverse our warrior and then windmilling the arms, pivoting on the demi point of the back leg, opening Anjali Mudra, hands together at the heart, or perhaps opening, flying the arms, the hips are squared. And then let's rotate movement, windmilling back and breathing deeply, twisting, second side. Awesome. And let's just do it one more time. Pivoting and again, rotating, finding the movement, enjoying the flow and gorgeous. Reversing our warrior and then straightening through the front leg, reversing our triangle. Beautiful, and then coming for, into our full Trikonasana here. 
Long wingspan, open that chest, rolling the chest up towards the ceiling. Beautiful, coming back, warrior two, and then we're just gonna cartwheel the arms to the floor, opening up, long wingspan, uh, ringing the heart open towards the ceiling. Looking up and then bringing the hand down, stepping back, and we're gonna press back to our downward facing dog. Shaking the head, yes. Shaking the head, no. Gazing at the navel, lifting the seat. Heels melt towards the floor. Maybe exploring, experimenting with different links to your dog. Pressing through all 10 fingers. I'm gonna look forward, lift the seat, lift the heels and either step or hop to the top of your mat and rolling up the spine vertebra by vertebra. Greeting the day and bringing the hands together at your heart. Re releasing the hands down, palms facing forward. Taking a moment just to repose, bask in the effects. Getting grounded and stabilizing. Although air signs love erratic vata energy, irregular energy, it's vital to stay grounded at the same time. Taking an extra moment here to imagine your roots penetrating down deep into the earth. Feeling all four corners of the feet, pressing down, and then perhaps lifting all 10 toes and then placing one toe at a time on the earth. Gorgeous, we're gonna practice some more balancing, coming to your top of your mat, bringing the feet together. We're just gonna lift up, clasping the right ankle, opening the right knee, and then coming into our tree pose. See if you can stay long and lifted through the axis of your being, the plumb line, the core channel, Shashumana Nadi along the spine. Perhaps imagining a string pulling your crown up while your chin stays parallel towards the earth. We're not dipping out through the left hip, allowing to stay active and almost like pressing against each other here. Your inner thigh is actively pressing against the bottom of your right foot and your right foot is, is softly, gently also pressing against the inner thigh here. You can bring the arms up with an inhale or perhaps you wanna bring the hands to the heart center, connecting into the, your anahata, that unconditional loving kindness and compassion without object or attachment. Just like air doesn't attach to a single place, so too does unconditional love reach everyone, an absolute form of compassion rather than a relative compassion is the quality of a really beautiful balanced anahata chakra, creating that equanimity in the way we love, balance, harmony, and then just dropping, releasing the right foot, maybe shaking out the left and then grounding down through the right foot, lifting up the left knee, opening and pressing the bottom of the left foot into the right inner thigh while staying active through the right outer hip here, allowing that long, beautiful line through your core axis, perhaps getting a little taller, keeping the chin parallel, and then bringing the arms up with an inhale, actively opening my hip here. That might even require you to zipper up through your low belly and tuck or drop your tailbone so it's pointing down towards the floor and really opening up all of the muscles and, and, uh, through, and tendons through this complex pelvic bowl. Just seeing if you can negotiate here with all of the universe that exists in your pelvis. And thinking about, or rather, yeah, thinking. Air signs are all about thinking. Gemini rules over the library, skills and knowledge, and it's 
all about the thinking mind, the, va uh, the vasanas. <laughs> Yoga is chitta vritti naroda, the cessation of the mental fluctuations of the thought forms. So really when we're in our yoga practice, we're seeking to calm or still the mind by focusing on the breath. So allow your focus and awareness just to become fascinated with the breath. Get so curious about this phenomenon, this sensation, this connection to life. Finding your drishti or your gaze at a single point to support your balance. And then we're gonna release Beautiful. And we're just going to switch it up in our forward fold today. We're going to take the right foot, cross it over, and then we're just going to come forward into a forward fold with the legs crossed, getting super versatile. And you might like to bring some blocks to help you like this. And you might get a really nice, interesting stretch here, releasing the neck if possible, or staying lifted as you need. A few breaths here, experimenting with this twisted variation. And we're just going to come up, maybe rolling up the spine, <laughs> and then we're going to uncross, and then crossing left over, or yeah, left over, right? getting tall, and then just bowing forward here, noticing the difference between the two sides. Gemini is all about a dynamic duality, a conversation of listening and responding. So listening to your body and then responding, perhaps by adjusting or micro adjusting, or maybe even coming out of the pose altogether. listening and responding, inhaling and exhaling, expanding and contracting. This is the dual dialogue of the twins, Gemini, this conversation amongst neighbors. Gemini rules over our neighbors, our local community, and also our logistics of our day-to-day -day life, such as our vehicles. Okay, and then releasing. Fantastic, well done. We're going to practice another balancing posture, my favorite half moon pose. So perhaps grabbing a block, you can enter into this just by tipping over, or you can do it beautifully like a Libra would. Libra being ruled by Venus, goddess of beauty. Libra wanting aesthetic harmony and beauty, symmetrical beauty in the world. So see if you can experience this in your body, maybe flowing from a warrior two and lifting off and just letting it be beautiful as you cascade down or maybe not so beautiful, depending on where your mind is today. Stabilizing through the right foot, through all four corners of the feet. Looking down, finding a single point of focus. Yoga is chitta vritti naroda, the cessation of the mental fluctuations of the thought forms. Meditation that we attain through a methodology, first of pratyahara, drawing the senses inward, then focusing, concentrating the mind, and then finally entering into a state of meditation. Coming back, warrior two, and releasing. Let's go on the second side, grabbing your block and having fun with this. Coming into our warrior two, or maybe you just wanna lift off in a different direction, trying to see if you can experience some beauty in your body and taking flight, <laughs> taking flight and bringing the left hand down either to the earth, a block, or letting it stay lifted, balancing here, creating balance between the two sides. Libra is the sign of balance, represented by the scales, sign of partnership, long-term committed partnerships and relationships. You can look down, finding a 
single point of focus, getting, stacking your hips even more, activating both legs. How can I create more harmony and balance in my being? Taking the middle path rather than indulging in extremes or disempowering myself through codependency and releasing back. Beautiful. Well done. We're going to flow through a round of Surya Namaskar and then meet me on the mat. Inhaling, rising up, lifting, opening through the front body, greeting the day. Exhaling, bowing forward towards the earth, humbly releasing. Gently lift and lengthen here, pressing the hands down into the earth. Stepping back, uh, plank position through Chaturanga and opening the heart, dropping the hips and rolling back over the toes, lifting the seat. Walking out the legs for a moment, just taking a few breaths in our down dog. This beautiful inversion, wonderful for the lymphatic system. Gorgeous. And look forward and hopping through your hands, meeting me on the mat. Let's just ground down with a nice forward fold here, stabilizing that air energy. Lifting up and out of the pelvic bowl, feet are flexed and grabbing a block or anything to support you if you like here and or just staying lifted through the heart for a moment and breathing, maybe bringing your two peace fingers to your peace toes, Libra being the one who wants peace <laughs> in the diplomat of the zodiac. So here I'm taking my middle finger and my index finger, catching my toes and just Pulling myself in. I could even try to see what happens if I engage my quads. Perhaps that might help me release my hamstrings a little bit. Experimenting. Staying super curious about your practice, about your body. Awesome. And I'm just going to roll down the spine and take a nice shoulder stand. So if you'd like to grab a blanket or a towel and fold it up so it's about an inch and a half or two inches thick, you can always place it underneath your shoulders without it touching your neck. So the neck and the head come towards the earth and rather just to create some space here to support the spine especially if you practice shoulder stand regularly it's often recommended to bring in some support here so i welcome you to grab a towel and fold it up so it's about an inch and a half or two inches and place it just so the towel is perfectly behind your shoulders ending at the top of the shoulders here so that the neck can then still be and the head can still be on the mat and then we're just going to bring our legs up the wall pointing and flexing through the feet. And rotating out the ankles. Beautiful. And then we're going to, and then we're going to roll back into our plow pose. I'm bringing my hands to the mat and I'm gauging my core, lifting my seat, pressing through my hands and safely rolling back into a um, plow pose here. And just noticing, listening to your body. If this is not the right posture for you, then just rolling out and keeping your legs up the wall. And then I'm just adjusting slightly, bringing my shoulders to the mat, I'm pressing the back of my head gently into the floor. My chin slightly moves away from my chest. And I'm seeing if I can stack my hips over my shoulders. This requires pretty flexible hamstrings, so you need to bend your knees there. And then we're just going to lift up slowly, keeping the neck straight, not looking to the left or the right. And bringing the hips forward and bringing the feet up candlestick and just bringing either flexing the feet or trying a demi point uh, stretching out the toes separating the toes or maybe pointing the feet 
There's a difference energetically if I bring my feet together or if they're apart. If they're together, I'm locking the energy in. And if they're apart, the energy's separated like a battery. Just staying here for as long as you like, breathing deeply, letting the lymph drain. Getting upside down. Maybe engaging at the core as needed. Bringing the pelvic bowl forward. And then after you're ready, when you're ready, gently, gently lowering the legs, maybe bending at the knees, and then just slowly vertebra by vertebra, rolling down the spine, releasing into a Shavasana for a moment. Then we're just gonna bend at the elbows here and lifting myself up. I'm gonna bring my elbows back towards my shoulders here, lifting up my heart. I could even be in Baddha Konasana, or maybe you went into like a full lotus here <laughs> already in your, in your candlestick pose. But whatever it is, maybe the legs are straight, opening through the heart, releasing the neck back into our Matsya fish pose. And letting the head come down lifting up through the heart. Taking a few breaths and then releasing down to the mat for a moment. Just noticing the effects of this pose and counter pose. Candle, shoulder, stand, shoulder stand and fish pose. Beautiful. And we are going to take one arm balance before we end. So first we're going to do this arm balance on our back. How is that possible? <laughs> so bending your knees in, bringing your hands up. I just want you to see what crow pose would be like on your back. So your hands are flexed and pointing up towards the ceiling. I'm just going to bring the knees to the here, the back of the arms and just seeing what that is like here. Look, noticing how the abdomen is really engaged and crunched. And then seeing what it would be like if you put the, uh, brought the inside of the knees to the outside of the bicep, like some people do their curl like this, kind of with their hips open. However, I recommend doing it as much as possible with the knees parallel. And ultimately, the, the arms will be bent here, but we're working towards straight arms. So just seeing what does it take here in muscle engagement in order to hold this posture, you're gonna be doing that the other direction. Let's rock and roll, have some fun <laughs> up and down the spine if this is the right thing for you and your body. And then, yeah, just rolling. And then maybe you're gonna jump up. <laughs> but coming on into a little squat here First, we're just gonna open the hips. I've been wanting to do this with you guys this whole time. So we're just gonna go into a low squat, malasana. Opening the heart. You could even bring one hand down and lifting, opening the heart. You could even reverse and clasp the hands. Or just keeping the wingspan open. Or maybe you wanna stay here at the heart center, working towards opening the hips and then opening to one side. And maybe clasping if you like. And if you have birds of paradise in your practice, go for it. That would be a really fun air sign. Asana, birds of paradise. If you know it, give it a go. Taking your time. Beautiful, and then we're gonna just bringing the knees together, placing the hands firmly on the ground, really using the breath here. So I'm gonna place my hands really firmly and I need to focus my drishti or my gaze on a single point in order to really balance in this posture. There's gonna be a negotiation in my balance between forward and back. So just using your Libra skills to negotiate <laughs> the dynamic polarity and duality of the air element. 
And then when you're ready, lifting your booty up in the air like you have suspenders on. You might want to approach this from a forward fold even. And then just bringing the back of the knees and then just experimenting. Maybe you want to lift one foot and then the other. And then eventually seeing if you can work in your balance towards straightening the arms or maybe not. Seeing what it's like here, protecting your wrists if this is not the right pose for you. Pointing the toes and maybe lifting the feet up. And then perhaps jumping back <laughs> if you want. And then shaking out the wrists when you've come through your crow pose, flying like a crow. So let's try it one more time, but first just reversing the hands on the floor, placing the back of the hands against the earth, spreading the fingers. Maybe you want to do that and facing the fingers inward, shaking out the wrist some more, maybe rolling them out. I'm just going to come into our crow pose again. So thinking about what needs to happen in order to make this possible. Just believe and just do it, of course. <laughs> and see, maybe you're visualizing yourself in this posture. And the booty gets up pretty high, like I'm wearing suspenders. I could actually stay here for a while. Most of the pressure is on like my flexors because this isn't necessarily like a normal thing for your wrist flexors to do. So it's actually, that's probably the biggest strain. And then the jump back, is I'm just staying with my shoulders over wrists and then using my core to jump back. Fantastic. Maybe we'll just do one more arm balance for fun. Let's try this. So, you might want to take like side crow as an op a variation to this, but I'm going to guide you through a really fun, funky side flying thing variation. So practicing like a figure four here, you need to stretch out your figure four. Take some time here, placing the back of your, placing your right ankle on the left quad here, opening the right knee out like a figure four. If you want to lay down on your back, thread your needle and take some time to open up your hip. I welcome you to do that. And when you're ready, I'm just going to sit up nice and tall here, placing the left hand down, lifting my right arm up. I'm going to twist now and I'm going to place the bottom of my right hand, my right foot on my right back of my bicep there, my right arm. Hello. And I'm twisting at the abdomen, so I'm getting a really nice twist here. And then I'm going to just lift up here <laughs> with my foot on my arm, balancing on my foot, and then I'm just going to kind of step on myself and then lift my left leg out to the side. It's like a flying pigeon twist figure four variation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's fun and it's actually not as hard as it looks. So give it a try. Get curious. And let's try it on the other side. So sitting up nice and tall here on your sit bones, lifting the chest a little bit, getting psyched, and then placing the opening at the left knee, bending and opening at the left knee, placing the back of the left ankle on the right quadricep here. My right knee and my left knee are both bent now. Take a breath here, open through the, the left hip, the left thigh and glute. Maybe you need to even recline and go into a deep, long figure four, threading your needle. Otherwise, we're going to sit up nice and tall. My right hand is back on the mat. I'm going to lift up through my left and get long through my side body. And I'm going to twist to the right. And I'm going to place the bottom of my, I'm going to place the bottom of my left foot on my left arm above my elbow, the back of my arm actually. Interesting. <laughs> and then I'm keeping my right hand already on the floor and then I'm going to bring my hands down like I'm kind of in chaturanga 
and then I'm going to step on the back of my left foot and I'm going to open my leg. Maybe this is called cricket. <laughs> what do you think? All right, what does it look like to you? Okay, fun time is over. <laughs> um, we're going to roll down our back just for a moment to marinate and integrate in that versatile, fun arm balancing. What would an air sign flow be without arm balances? If you are loving these arm balances, definitely stay connected with me. I'll be sharing more soon. Beautiful. I'm just going to roll up to a seat finally for some pranayama to finish up and we're going to take our Brahmari pranayama. We did this in our embodied astrology class. If you remember, Brahmari, the sound of the buzzing bee. Bzz. So we're going to make the sound of the buzzing bee. Hmm. Go ahead and try. Hmm. Basically humming. We're going to sustain the hum with the exhale. So we're going to inhale fully, closing the right nostril with our clean hands. So closing the right nostril with the right thumb and taking the index and middle finger and pointing it towards the third eye. And then we're going to inhale full breath, no count through the left nostril. And then we're going to take our thumbs and close off the flaps of our ears, take our index finger and point it to the anterior fontanelle here, the Brahmarandra, the soft point in the top of the head. And then the second finger, third finger and fourth finger on the eyebrows while plugging the ears like making a helmet. And we're going to make the sound of the buzzing bee and clear out energy in our body. We're going to listen to the vibration and experience this internally. And we're going to do this because Aquarius is the sign, the air sign, fixed air of experimentation. And it's an eccentric, unique sign. So this is a very eccentric and unique practice, I feel, depending on how far you are, long you are in your yoga practice, because things can get really weird <laughs> at some point. <laughs> But we're going to do this because it's fun, we're experimenting, and you're going to see the effects for yourself. Approach this like a science experiment, our yogic technology, with the breath. So we're exhaling to begin, and inhaling, closing off the right nostril, pointing at the, the third eye. Inhale left. Closing off the flaps of the ears, putting on your helmet, and begin. No stress, just relax, inhale. round. And after your third and final round, releasing and basking in the after effect of this Pramari Pranayama. to leave you here if you'd like to recline into a shavasana, dim the lights, take your time, stay grounded as you move through your day, beloveds. And if you loved this experience, definitely check out the Zodiac Yoga series at moongirlastrology.com. I would love to have you in this in-depth exploration of all 12 signs. I'm Carrie Elizabeth, your guide. I will see you soon. Namaste.